<laughs> yeah, so we are having oh, are we good with the streaming and everything, Andrew? Just uh, yes, we're good. Amazing. So uh, welcome to the Scale of Eat workshop. Um, as we're letting everybody uh, join. Um, if you do have any questions, please post them in the chat, either in on Zoom or YouTube uh, as we go. And uh, just a quick reminder, if you've heard all these talk, I've reminded you a million times, but go make your steak uh, for, um, place your steaks for the, the, the hack so that you can participate. And um, yeah, I will let you take uh, this over, Austin. All right, what's up, everybody? Hi, I'm Austin Griffith. Uh, I'll probably just start sharing my screen here and just dive right into it. Uh, yo, right there, yeah. So I am Austin Griffith. You can find me at austingriffith.com or uh, at Austin Griffith on Twitter. Uh, but that's uh, that's me. So let's see. Uh, I'm gonna bring. Can I bring everybody back over here? Oh yeah, there we go. There's everybody. Okay, so uh, I want to show off Scaffold ETH. So if we dive right into Scaffold ETH real quick, it's it's a freestanding DAP that has hard hat for compiling contracts and has uh, a React front end that's ready to go for you and kind of wires everything together. So you can just come in, you, you have to yarn start and in, install and start a backend and you have to yarn chain and that will fire up your local blockchain. But then you yarn deploy and it's gonna package up a, a template smart contract for you and it's going to deploy it to your local chain and then it's gonna inject that into your front end. So you get a nice reload over here of your new contract. And let's do it one more time to make sure we see that. What we're gonna see is we should see this uh, contract uh, update and we should get a new contract. And this this is really good for being able to iterate and kind of like learn as you go. So uh, Scaffold ETH does have like this full, like the quick start that I just went through is here, but then as you get into it and we'll dive into it more, but then you get into like learning solidity and it's talking about like passing stuff into your solidity and making changes. So I just wanna just, I don't wait, let's, let's add some ex exclamation points here. I just wanna show that it changes. So looking at, here's our contract, here we go. We're gonna deploy with some exclamation points in our purpose, just showing that we changed some solidity and now this, this form over here, this scaffolding should auto adapt to it. And eventually you carve this out and you build a real UI, but this is kind of like a, a stand in UI for you while, you while you kind of iterate and look at your contract. So uh, let's, let's look at this real quick up close. So we have this smart contract that has a purpose and we are console logging that purpose, uh, console log in your solidity, let's see it happen. And, and so we set the purpose and then we console log it, right? So we have this one storage variable. So if I put in hello world over here and I hit send, uh, there is a console log that fires over here in your yarn chain uh, terminal. Uh, I lost it though. <laughs> but so that is a great way to debug your solidity. Like, first of all, like it shows you like how new we are to the space that console log is awesome. But once you get in here and you need to really figure out what's going on with your contract, that console log is going to be really handy. So let's see, let's see, you want to be able to poke at your contract, right? I was able to set hello world. Uh, let's, let's just do the exclamation point again. Okay. So we can talk to our contract. Uh, let's talk about accounts first. So when you get into Scaffold ETH, if you go to localhost 3000, you'll notice in the top right, uh, there's an account that's generated for you and you can grab funds from the faucet and now we have some funds, right? And so let's maybe even have these two accounts here and let's copy this address. And so hackathon projects, when you need to sit down and build something over a weekend, you're gonna need to have an address input. Wouldn't it be nice if that address input was was kind of like prepared for you and had things like ENS resolution, had things like the blocky preview, had a QR code scanner. It will work this time, Catherine, sorry. And then uh, you could send like a dollar instead of having to send whatever the ETH value is, I can just say, I wanna send $1 and hit go. And we should see a dollar go from this account to that account, I think, did it go? Oh, I sent it to austingriffith.e. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now with wallets, uh, you can connect and you can bring in your MetaMask if you want. And it's going to also have a nice like network warning for people that are on the wrong network. Just a bunch of handy components that you're going to find that 
if you sit down and try to build a hackathon project, you just need all these components already. So I've kind of prepared them in scaffold eats so you can pull them off the shelf. Okay, cool. So we've kind of got this. I, I don't want to log in as me. I do have the dollar though. It worked. I'm going to log back out and just stick with that burner wallet that I got on page load. And let's just dive into uh, just a little bit more scaffold ETH before we start building something. So uh, if you wanted to say add a UN8 public counter here and set it equal to five and you hit save and deploy, this thing is gonna notice that you added a new thing to your contract and it's gonna show up over here, right? So while we're waiting for that, I'm even gonna add a function decrement uh, that what? That does what? That does a counter minus minus, right? Counter equals counter minus one. We're gonna redeploy that. There's our counter, it's set to five, but now we have a decrement function we've added to. We're kind of playing around with the EVM, kind of figuring out how Solidity works. We wanna just kind of like test our assumptions here. And here it goes, now we have uh, a decrement function to call. And if I decrement that counter all the way to zero, what happens if I go one more? 255, right? It rolls over, we get underflow. Yeah, word. So uh, uh, you, you need to learn about those things, right? And you need to figure those out. And so my theory is have a full standing dApp, pull all of this down, and then kind of just go through this. If you're looking to learn solidity, there's, there's primary, you know, learn the primary data types by copy and pasting them in. Uh, throw, throw in, uh, let's go see if primitives and data types, right? So you've got your UNs, you've got a bool, but then you've got addresses, right? And you could totally just, okay, let's, let's create an address. Let's make it public. Uh, let's call it owner and let's set it equal to, and I'm just going to go right back here, just copy and paste this right in here and hit save and we'll deploy that, right? So we're just kind of iterating, tight iteration loops, small changes, testing our assumptions. We're seeing what's gonna happen when we add this new owner here. Hopefully we'll see that we are the owner, right? We're keeping some arbitrary owner. Cool, and then maybe let's build uh, just real quick, just to do some good solidity uh, intro. Let's require that the uh, message.sender, which is a global variable that is the person that's accessing the function is equal, equal to the owner. And if not, we'll say not the owner. And so now hopefully only we can set the purpose. It's more of like a centralized, uh, decentralized attestation for one account, right? Something along those lines. But now let's see what happens. So we're going to need our account, but we're also going to need some uh, like kind of bad guy account to make sure they can't set it, right? We want to test it. So let's give the bad guy some funds. So this should work, right? Right, right, this work. Uh, this does not, right? And let's, we reload that in. There we go, we get a error, not the owner, right? So we can kind of build out our solidity. We can copy and paste things from solidity by example. We can kind of go through this curriculum, uh, but eventually you kind of, get it, you get the feel for it, you've got Solidity, you can write code. Solidity is not that hard. Writing Solidity is pretty easy. Writing secure Solidity is very hard, but writing, writing just putting some Solidity down here and having this storage and execution is pretty easy. So let's clean this out. So by the way, I was using that owner. Uh, if you are ready for inheritance, you can kind of do that, right? And you can do is ownable. So this is just bringing in the Oakland Zeppelin stuff. Instead of using my ownership pattern, let's use Open Zeppelin's ownership pattern and see what that looks like. Oh, what did I do? Something about, yep, I can't do that. I'm going to have to say, I'm going to use a function modifier only. And you would know that by going and looking at the code or looking at what pops up over here in our preview. Okay, it's about NFT time. We are 10 minutes in. Let's, let's do some NFT, NFTs here. I think I need to maybe set this to public? Is it complaining about that? It is. Okay. Well, we're, we're getting through it. Okay. So now that I've added, I've inherited that ownable uh, contract from Open Zeppelin, we should see some new stuff show up in this interface, right? Yeah, sure enough. There's transfer ownership, there's owner, and the owner's not us anymore because it's actually this guy down here, this faucet address. The first address of the uh, hard hat chain is the deployer here and is the owner. So what we'd have to do is maybe like dive into our deploy script and do something like await oh, your contract dot transfer. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Oh yeah. To who we going to? Let's go to this guy. Okay. There we go. There we go. Let's do another yarn deploy. Now we should be the owner. So now you can kind of orchestrate stuff in your deployment if you want. Let's get on to the NFT. So with scaffold ETH, 
uh, this helps you get set up. But now there's also like tons of other branches that other people have worked on and, and committed back to the repo. And I'm gonna look at a couple of those uh, today. Let's see, I'm gonna kill off that and kill off that. I think we're good over here with Scaffold ETH. Now let's move over here. So we are in the branch. Uh, let's see, we are in the simple NFT branch here. Simple NFT example. And uh, let's see, here we go. Oh, I, I may be way behind on questions. I, there's only like a three things in the chat. I think maybe I'm behind, but I'll, I'll jump back to that in a second. Let's, let's get some NFT stuff going. So let's follow this exactly, right? We, we cloned it down, we CD'd in, we did a Git checkout. Now let's uh, yarn install, that's, let's, that's gonna take time, we already did it. Yarn start, okay? So we're gonna fire up that uh, dev server and then we'll do a yarn chain, which is gonna fire up our local blockchain. And then we'll do a yarn deploy and that will deploy our contracts, whatever they are, to our local chain. Now here's our contract. So in this branch, the your contract is a your collectible and we've brought in 721 encounters from Open Zeppelin, and we've just basically like copied their their procedures here, uh, pretty pretty exactly really. <laughs> there's there's a counter that will increment. Uh, so so we have our base URI. So we're just throwing stuff in IPFS, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. But there's a just a simple mint item, and that comes right from the the Open Zeppelin docs. We increment some tokens, so each token has its own ID. And, and then we mint those to someone. This is a really cool, maybe like tangent to dive in while we're waiting for this web server to come up is the, the difference in solidity between an ERC-20 and an ERC-721 really helps me understand fungibility and non-fungibility. So when you think of the structure of an ERC-20 or a fungible asset, it's just balances of people. And there's a transfer function that moves balance from Alice to Bob, right? And if you wanna check somebody's balance, they have 20, right? But it's fungible in terms of Alice can send five to Bob and then send five to Bob again, and then Bob could send those 10 and you wouldn't know which ones are which. It's just a balance, right? It's just a mapping of some user has some balance and that changes with the transfer. How that's different with a 721 is each token, it has its own unique ID and there's an owner of that ID and they're sent one at a time. So instead of thinking of a balance array mapping for a number, you think of more like this NFT is its own thing and someone owns it and someone can transfer it around. So kind of fungible versus non-fungible in a, in a, oh man, come on dev server. <laughs> we're waiting for this React dev server to come up. Okay. But while we're waiting, we've got our collectible. We've looked through this stuff. What's next? Uh, what it wants to do is have us check out the mint.js. So along with your deploy is a mint.js. And in here, it's going to craft up IPFS objects. So, so I've prepared some, some of my own artwork. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to craft up this uh, uh, piece of art and we're gonna put it into IPFS and then we're gonna take the little fingerprint, the hash and we're gonna put that into the contract and we're gonna mint that on the contract. So, and if we look at our mint function, it takes in this token URI. So that's gonna be our, uh, our IPFS hash. Okay, I think our front end is finally up. Let's go look at localhost 3000. It's gonna look familiar if you have done anything with scaffold ETH. Here we go. We can even go grab some funds from the faucet. We, we are scaffold ETHing here, okay. So IPFS upload, you've got a nice little uh, toolbox here. If you wanna upload something to IPFS, you can hit send. Uh, you can grab that and go back to IPFS download. You can grab it back. So nice little IPFS kind of debugging. Uh, but in our mint function, we've kind of taken care of that stuff for you. You, you set up your manifest here and it will, uh, it will mint them uh, on chain. Here we go. So you, so you as the artist, basically, you're going to deploy an NFT contract, and then you're going to deploy each, uh, you're going to mint each piece of work, and then it can be uh, bought and sold here. So let's let's just follow the instructions. Where are we at? What are we at? Okay. So we edited. We need to edit this, and I think the one thing you want to do is just change this front end address, but it's already set to my burner wallet, so we're good there. But if I do a yarn mint. Now what's gonna happen is it's going to, oh, wait, 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 we gotta deploy the contract first, right? Where, where are the instructions? I feel like we need a yarn deploy before a yarn mint. Yes, yarn deploy. Okay, let's do that first. 
Sorry, come on, come on, here we go. Okay, so now we're gonna deploy our collectible and we could go debug the contract. We could see that it's 9FE4, right? Yep, okay, cool. Now we're ready to mint our collectible. So we've deployed that contract at that cost. It's already pretty expensive, but now each one of these, we're gonna spend some more gas and we're gonna mint, right? So if I do a yarn mint, Hopefully what happens here is it starts taking those IPFS hashes and minting them. Yep, there they go. And minting them uh, on our NFT contract. So each one of these is a transaction and you've minted NFT. So you can pull this thing off the shelf, run through these steps, and you sort of have a, a local dApp that can uh, mint NFTs and uh, you can kind of build all the fun stuff into it. it. It's sort of like how you extend it is the interesting part of Ethereum. Like Ethereum's superpower is the fact that any old developer can grab a lot of this stuff off the shelf, change like one little piece of code and it, and it changes like a whole, it invents a new financial mechanism, right? So, so there's a lot of room to just kind of take this and kind of iterate and make changes. Uh, let's just, let me, let me do the whole burner wallet thing real quick again. Let's uh, pull up a new account that points to localhost 3000. Let's copy their account and then let's send them this bison buffalo guy. There we go, transfer. Send them a zebra, transfer, right? Cool, so we're also sending around NFTs and we're seeing them move from, from account to account. Uh, I think the way it has you finish this one off is you, we edit the art, you send around. Okay, so deploying, right? So when you're ready, you can set your hard hat network to some other network and you'll do a yarn generate and create a, gener uh, a, a deployment account and you'll fund that deployment account and then you do yarn deploy and then it goes out to whatever network you wanna go to. And then you can get into your front end over here, this app.jsx and you can change that to point to whatever public network you have and deploy that as a static website. And you've basically deployed an NFT minting platform thing, right? Okay, so yep, down there you get the deploy. We mint, yeah, you can follow the instructions. There's some fun side quests, but that uh, that is the simple NFT branch. But the thing with this is it takes uh, quite a lot of time to, or uh, quite a lot of money to uh, mint these. So as the artist, I have to, it's probably like 500 bucks to throw that contract out there and then probably like 40 bucks a piece to mint those NFTs. What I'd really like to do is I'd like to take that simple NFT branch and I'd like to fork it and I'd like to make a few changes to it, right? And that's going to move us to the buyer mints NFT branch. So let me try a yarn install and yarn start. Hopefully that, that gets going a little quicker this time. We'll bring up the chain and let's follow the instructions, right? Right here in the readme, there's uh, some nice instructions on how this is going to work. And let's see, we get into simple NFT. Ooh, yeah, okay, so we have to do an upload this time. So this one's gonna be different. Instead of deploying the contract and then firing off the mint contract to mint all your collectibles, we're going to first upload all of our collectibles and we're gonna take all those hashes, basically all the fingerprints, a fingerprint of each piece of work. And we're gonna put that into the constructor when we deploy our contract. So we're gonna kind of set up, it's kind of like counterfactual NFTs. We're gonna set up our NFT contract so a certain list can be minted within that contract, but we're not gonna pay for it up front. We're gonna have the buyer pay for it when, when they do the minting. Oh man, are we gonna to have to wait for another development server to start up? That might take a little bit. Okay, let's go look at getting this art uploaded. So we've got the chain, uh, yarn upload is our next thing. Okay, so let's look at this code real quick. This one's set up so any artist can really just pick it up and edit this artwork.json file. I've kind of uh, abstracted it out to you have this nice artwork.json file now. And you get in here and you set, you know, what's the name, what's the description, what's the external URL, what are the images? Uh, is it gonna have attributes? We can go, uh, let's just go on a little side quest to OpenSea real quick while we're waiting for this front end to come up. And if I go to, I think I've, I've uploaded a couple of these already. Let's go look at these. I wanna show these attributes off and how uh, OpenSea parses those. Come on, OpenSea, load. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, we'll wait for that to load. All right, let's, let's talk more uh, NFT topics. So 
uh, once, once you've got this figured out where the buyer pays, and I'll talk about some other methods. There we go. We're back. We're back. Okay. Uh, I'll talk about some other methods in a little bit, but uh, once you have this, uh, we can get into, actually, it's just coming up. Let's just, no, it's going to take a bit. Okay. So once you have buyer pays, let's talk about some other fun uh, mechanisms that we can build in there. So a bonding curve is a good example. If you go to, uh, let's see, if you go to scaffold ETH, and I think I have a cool market. I think it's called backlog market. Yeah, cool. This is going to be a, a weird little bonding curve right here. Maybe I could paste this to chat too. I think I'm going to. Here it is. I'm going to paste this to chat. Ooh, ooh, maybe I'm not. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. YouTube chat. Here we go. Pasting it. Here we go. Boom. Okay, backlog market. So this has a numerator and a denominator, and it's basically this this multiplier. So we keep we keep a price function, and then we keep a numerator and denominator, and then you you buy these NFTs out of this gallery, and the price gets more expensive. So we we don't have to do any fancy calculus or anything with like the Bancor method here. If you want to make a bonding curve with NFTs, it's just you're buying these things one at, a, one at a time, like in a discrete way. So you can easily put in this sort of numerator dom denominator kind of curve. And as they buy one one at a time, you just kind of multiply or or uh, subtract by that, that curve. So what do we got? So we have next price and we have previous price. And when someone goes to buy, it's basically going to uh, make sure that they're paying whatever the next price is, right? So that that contract's out there. Uh, ooh, let's see. Okay, it's not liking that I don't have assets. I think what I need to do is the yarn deploy or yarn upload next. So following these instructions, uh, next thing to do is a yarn upload. So it's going to take that uh, this manifest that I've set up, this artwork.json. And now it's going to upload them all to IPFS and it's going to generate for us uh, some assets. And while we're here, can we get the collectibles to load? Come on. Oh no. I think I spelled it right. <laughs> I wonder if it's it's only ha or, uh, cached for a while. Did I spell it right? I did. I don't know what's up. Maybe OpenSea's testnet stuff. Let's try one more time. Okay, so we've uh, uploaded our assets to IPFS. Now we're going to mint a contract with our assets fingerprints in them. So, so this takes in a, a bytes 32 array. And when you do the deployment, it's going to take all of our uploaded IPFS assets and pass those into our collectible. So when we do deploy, there's going to be uh, just one payment that we have to make. We have to pay for that one contract to go. And it's going to be $500 or so right now with the gas prices, but you just deploy that one contract. And then we've, we've set in the contract that only certain pieces can get minted. So we've sort of set up our contract so it will only mint certain one lol, certain ones that we tell it to. So now let's go check that out. Okay, here we go. So here is our counterfactual gallery, right? When, when we see all of these pieces of work, they're actually not on chain yet. They're only allowed, but they're allowed to go on chain, right? So let's go here and let's grab some funds from the faucet. And I think it's gonna give us a lot more. It did not, we need more than that. Uh, here we go. Here's a good way to get a ton of funds. You copy your address, you go to the bank, you go here and maybe do like, $10,000, right? Okay, so now we have $10,000. It's gonna cost us a little more to mint this though, but now let's mint this bison right here. And what we do is we pay the gas. So we as the buyer pay the gas for the artwork and the, the seller basically gets whatever is left other than the gas fees, right? So we can put in a price function, we can kind of iterate from there. And that's, that's what I kind of want to show off. Let's see, let's, let's bring up, let's do, the, let's do the burner wallet thing one more time. I think we're about out of time too, but let me just set this up. So this, let's copy this person's address. If I go to collectibles, there's the Buffalo that I minted. We should still be able to transfer it and see it show up over there, awesome. And if they try to go over here, they probably don't have enough gas to buy that. Yep, 
Okay, cool. So counterfactually minted NFTs where the buyer pays for the gas is really just a small change. We this this original contract I've added a for sale and and a token to URI or URI to token ID. That's kind of separate, but I've taken that original contract from the simple NFTs and I've added just a small bit. I've just added some some like a, an extra thing of storage and I kind of like loop through that and set those things and set them up to be for sale. And that's kind of the point I want to kind of hammer home with this is you can pick something up that's freestanding that's already ready to go and you can make small changes to it and and really like turn turn it into all sorts of different ideas pretty easily. Let me see what else we have. I think I have another tab. Oh, we don't have really time to dive into it. Oh, this is the punk wallet. I just, I love the way this thing looks. Uh, let's see. Punk, it, it, the send button doesn't work right now, but look how cool this, uh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Or if I log out of here and get a, yeah, there we go. Or I do a burner wallet. Wallet. Okay, cool. All right. Anyways, I'm, I'm off on a tangent. Okay, so cool, cool little tweaks you can make to this contract. We've talked about bonding curves already. We talked about a pricing function. Uh, but if you get uh, online and look up open Zeppelin's contracts, you can really get in here and find out like what other cool things you can do, right? Let's go to tokens. Let's go to 720. By the way, 1155 is there. I think we've talked about it a little bit, but have 1155 on your radar. Uh, if we get into 721, we can kind of see the basic stuff, but then let's go look at like, oh, what is this like burnable extension, right? What if you want to make physical assets like some socks and set them up so they're burnable and people can buy them on that curve. And if they burn them, then you send them the physical merchandise, right? Cool, cool, fun thing you can do with, with physical. Oh, speaking of physical, look at this. This is physical art. So uh, it was like at an E2 conference, Vitalik was speaking and I was like in the back printing these and they were all loud. Oh man, embarrassing. But I printed my artwork out and then on the back is a QR code. And if you scan the QR code, then you have that NFT in a nice little burner wallet and you can send them around at the Rare AF festival. It's like my NFT heroes, like Matt Condon and Simon DLR, it's like sitting in the front row, sending my artwork around with burner wallets. It was wonderful. <laughs> okay, so let's see, uh, loot boxes. How about the VRF stuff? You can get a random number for Chainlink. You can get a random number with commit reveal and you can like reveal an NFT later, which is kind of exciting. Uh, let's see, interoperability. All right, here we go. So permissionlessly, right? Any, oh man, who knows what's gonna be on the front page of Nifty Inc. Let's, I'm, I'm gonna pull up a burner wallet and I'm gonna go to Nifty Inc. And look, this is exactly the same. I've got the, the same account kind of in the bottom right. This, this feels like a scaffold ETH app, but this is, this is Nifty Inc. Uh, but Nif I wanted to show you this because it's an NFT platform we built that upgrades to Ethereum. But what I'm really wanna, wanna talk about is the, uh, the composability and the fact that permissionlessly, anybody can take these and turn them into game assets, right? And they're NFTs available for anyone. So you can come in here and you could draw, say we were like, I don't know, maybe we were making a chess game, right? And I could draw the pawn. What a terrible pawn this is, but I'm I'm do <laughs> doing it. All right, pawn, it's a, what, one of eight, right? So we'll do eight. I don't know if this is gonna work, but what you could do now, now that I've minted this, is I could set up a script that sends these things to a bunch of people. And then I can go to collab land and I can say, I want, actually, I think it's a Telegram collab land bot, but I'll give them a shout out there. What I can say is, hey, I want to uh, only have people that own this token uh, in the chat. So let's see if I go to, uh, this is taking too long to mint. Let's see if I go here and sometimes a relay is down. I try to pe pay people's gas, but it doesn't really work all the time. But if I go here, let's see if we can see someone has owned, look at these nice glasses of wine. Uh, only one person owns that, but they could be owned by a bunch of people and only those people could get into this chat, right? And that's just a really tiny example of utility that you can give to these. But there's the, that would be the challenge I would put out there for uh, hackathon participants is to find some really fun utility for these NFTs. And they can be anything, right? It could be an ID card that proves that I'm something, something, right? Or, or it doesn't have to be like a, a painting or a collectible, right? Like an NFT can be is so many other things and, and I'm excited to see what everybody creates. Uh, let's see, oh, branches of Scaffold ETH. I have it in my notes. If, if you go to Scaffold ETH and you're looking for something, go right here and type it in. Maybe bonding curve, right? Maybe you're looking for commit reveal. 
maybe you're looking for NFTs, maybe you're looking for a, like a Uniswap, or maybe you're looking for Aave, right? There's tons of branches in there and they can get you started right away. So clone down Scaffold ETH, pull that stuff off the shelf and build something awesome. I think that's about it. Any, let's, we can do questions. Do we have time for questions? Questions? You do have a, a few questions. I mean, um, you can definitely extend this a little bit. I, we don't have an, another workshop right away. So if you do have time, um, I don't, I want to respect your time too, but we can take a look. Oh bit. yeah, no, I'm good. I'm kind of looking through, let's see, is it possible to add ERC 20 combinations? I think I'm looking at something else here. I see ERC 1155, definitely check out 1155, like go to the open Zeppelin contracts. I don't see any other questions though. I think we're pretty good. Uh, we there is, Do you see so, some? Oh, chat, yeah. I see some more. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and if you check in the chat, there is like a few questions about security check. I think that might have been answered in the chat in YouTube. Um, but I mean, there's not that many questions. There's just uh, something about contract and the URL. What security checks? So NFTs can't be stolen. Well, let's just dive into that real quick. Like you want you if you're if you're running an NFT platform, I D, I D K if you want to be custodial, right? I think that might have been the problem with the recent hack is that people didn't own their own keys and own their own NFTs. But I I don't know. I just read the headline. I don't know much about it. But yes, you need to do a lot of auditing on these things before you go to mainnet. It's important that you don't lose people's stuff. Something about, yeah, the, oh, oh, he was saying if I put in the contract address here, I could look it up, I think is what they were saying for the OpenSea stuff. Yeah, I could have done that. I think if I would have gone to OpenSea and put in the uh, Rinkaby contract, that would have worked. Word. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Yeah, is there any other question? Um, or we're good? Last question. question, if you could touch on scalability. Um, if we need kind of a platform that requires a little bit more user interaction than just minting some artwork or something, actual voting and uh, voting on content, voting on comments and stuff like that. Do you have any viable options at this point or is, is uh, our gas prices just too high? That, that's a great question. Yeah. So like right now I go to a side chain like Matic or XDAI, but I think that we do have some really cool L2 solutions like in the two month horizon, right? Oh, sweet. So build, build your stuff to be EVM compatible. I, there are some gotchas with rollups, like you don't have native ETH and you have to kind of like have everything be a token instead of the ETH. There, you have to use a different compiler. Uh, there's not like traditional blocks. It's just like transactions and transactions are happening in real time. So like timing <laughs> is a little bit different uh, in, in that specific rollup. There's, there's probably lots of other little gotchas, but I think that the key is like sticking with EVM compatibility and kind of, it's like, I can take my exact stack and I can deploy it to XDAI and let people play around with it for cheap and, and easy, but there, you know, there's security, there's a, a lot less security there, right? So, okay. and that's with, with Nifty Inc, we have like, okay, we let the artists and we let everybody mint stuff very cheap over on XDAI. And then they can buy and sell that NFT but it doesn't have to upgrade to Ethereum unless it gains a, a bunch of value, right? There, there are plenty of, of nifty inks that have been upgraded to, to OpenSea and I can now sell them on, on mainnet, but there's a lot of them that don't deserve to go to mainnet. And it's still, it's great though, because as the artist, I can get in there and doodle whatever I want and hit go right. and it, it's an NFT. Very cool. And is that as simple as kind of changing something in your, in your, whether you use a uh, hard hat or, or truffle, just changing something in your config to deploy to those, or is there more considerations to make? And do you have resources for those that you recommend? Yep. That's, that's exactly it. You change, you basically change the RPC address that you're deploying to and everything works exactly the same. So wow. for Matic or XDAI, just Google those and you can go pick up a small amount, slide into my DMs. I'll send you a penny of XDAI, not oh, too sweet. many people, <laughs> but, and, and that's with one penny, you can deploy like a hundred contracts too. So it's, oh, it's wow. like, it, it goes a long ways on those side chains cause they, it is cheap, but Obviously, there's the security trade-off, right? It's it's a POA network, a PDPOS, whatever you want to call it. It's not as secure as Ethereum, and so uh, yeah, the, there's always those concerns. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, we'll slide in. Thanks for the presentation. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Austin, and uh, for the questions too. Um, don't want to take too much of your time. I mean, if if you want to take one more question, quick in the chat. Otherwise. 
I will uh, refer people to. So uh, the way to get in touch with us is going to be for the next uh, few minutes, if you go to hack support in the Discord channel, um, Austin will be like checking out the, the, your questions if there's anything else that you want to cover. I am headed there now. Awesome. And feel free to ask questions. Great. You want to take awesome. the last question Thank or you, you want to go right yeah, Sure, on? whatever. Yeah, I, I think if anybody has a question, yeah, jump in. If not, we can just head to the chat. And it was something I was saying, like, who runs the IPFS gateway that NFTs on OpenSeas use? What happens if the entity folds? And oh, that's a great question. Yeah, probably Infura yeah, is running it. that. But like there, there are old projects. I think I saw Denison talk about there were some of his assets that he uploaded to IPFS and some of them that he put in the cloud. And the ones that he put in IPFS, he hadn't pinned, he didn't have servers up and kind of went away and came back. Those, those are gone, right? Like you need to keep those things pinned. You probably want to run your own IPFS pinner. Uh, also probably keep things in the cloud as a backup. But uh, yeah, there, it, it's, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network of storage and there isn't a layer of incentivization as far as I know yet. So you kind of have to run your own. But when that incentivization layer comes in, it would be pretty dope if you could say, hey, this site of mine, I'll pay you guys to all keep a copy of it, right? And I think that's coming. Awesome. Thank you so much, Austin. I don't want to take more of your time. Uh, I'll see you on Discord on the Hack Support channel. Uh, thanks again so much uh, to you and uh, everyone who's been here today. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Oh, there's that cool punk again. <laughs> <laughs> I just love, it's like when you're building something, you get excited about it. I love it. All right, I'm diving into the chat. Thank you so much for having me.